Bum, 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 bum. What's going on, guys? This is Tyler Breck from T-Bone MMA. And another great, exciting card here tonight. Obviously, I got my buddy Moore here with us. I think any card could be more exciting than the card that you and I had to endure last week. Last, last week, week I think we were... should get a belt. <laughs> and people in the comments section, <laughs> if you can construct even just like a JPEG picture of a belt for us having to endure commentating on such a lackluster card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody won on that card. <laughs> no, up until the, it started to pick up in the main event, but this fight, I'm looking forward to it because we got obviously Chris Cyber. We got a lot of great finishers. And when was the last time Max Holloway was in a boring fight? Uh, mm, never. Never, exactly. Maybe uh, a custody one. Wait, what now? No, I'm joking. <laughs> and then uh, Nico Price. Uh, Nico Price always holds a special place in my heart because when I first started this about three years ago now, Nico Price was the first person I took notes on, mm -hmm. and that kind of kicked everything off, and now here he is fighting on a main card. It's pretty exciting, for me anyway. And we were talking earlier about someone like Alexis Davis, who had so much experience, and uh, again, another fighter that's kind of gone under the radar on this card here tonight, Alexis Davis, has fought some of the best of the best mm -hmm. of the female fighters. Like, she fought Shanna Baszler when well, Shanna Baszler was Well, she fought all five back when there was five. Exactly. <laughs> And then she even beat fighters like Amanda Nunes, too. Did she? Yeah, she beat her way back in in Invicta, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Way back in the, way back in the day, I won't quite get into that too much. But nonetheless, anyway, uh, to kick things off, here's Bruce Buffer with my intro. Cool, that's going on. Let me... And now, presenting the champion, fighting... Out of the red corner, this man is a podcaster. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Podcasting out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, presenting the host of T-Bone MMA Podcast, Tyler T-Bone. Brag! Here's us this morning, Thank you very much, Bruce Buffer. <laughs> That's a good picture right there. So oh. how, how did that jump go? How did your landing go yesterday? Ooh, okay. So here's something I'm having troubles with on my jumps. So in Bulgaria, when I exited the aircraft, uh, I had my saw and my mossy, which is the weapons case, and then I jumped in a salt pack rather than a ruck. So, you know, the backpack mm -hmm. rather than a big ruck. I think because I was light, I thought that had something to do with it. So go to yesterday. Yesterday I jumped with an M4 in my Mossy, so way lighter. And then I didn't have much in my Ruck because I knew that whatever follow-on mission we were going to have like wasn't going to be like a big serious one. So I, I packed relatively light as well because nothing's more miserable than being on... You'll find out soon, especially when you got to carry an aid bag in your Ruck. Nothing's more miserable... Than jumping with a lot of weight in your rock and in your moss seat. Oh yeah, I had to do that in, in Bulgaria. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't carry a saw though, which is pretty lucky for me. <laughs> so, fast forward. I think back to back times with me jumping so light. I'm used to overcompensating, and then just jumping like as hard as I can. Because usually when you jump, you need to jump up six inches and out thirty six inches. That's the like, idea anyway. Vigorous jump, and that is the idea. <laughs> and I'm not weighed down at all. And so I think usually what I'm doing now is I'm jumping, like, just too much. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I see. I'm also, like, picturing, like, takedowns and stuff <laughs> when yeah. I'm exiting the burp. So that's, that's, like, the driving motion I want to do with my legs, that push. And so when I'm doing that, I'm jumping too much. And then because of it, my feet's catching the wind. And both jumps back to back, my feet have gone above my head, and I felt my chute open underneath me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's two times. I could have potentially gotten rolled up in my shoe and plummeted <laughs> down to the earth. That's always the big, the big fear. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, after after that debacle, me trying to fix that, I had my just my risers got twisted up, so that was a quick fix. And then after that, everything just went pretty much smooth. I I did the little tie down on my Moss C, and then I was looking around, making sure no one was around. And when I got to about 200 meters or so, I lowered the equipment and soft landing. Soft landing from there. And then my priorities as soon as I land is, one, I take a whiz. Mm -hmm. And two, 
I packed a fat lip, <laughs> <laughs> gathered all my stuff, and I went running. There you go. <laughs> that's that's always the script says place your weapon in operation first, but that seems to be the trend. Oh, Take a piss. Absolutely. Then, <laughs> you talk to anybody in division, they say they do the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, first sergeants and commanders are gonna say otherwise, but mm-hmm. you talk to Joe's. <laughs> yeah. We all do that. What's up, Ian Martin? What's up, Yusuf? Yeah, so what we're doing here, this is a UFC 240 pre-fight show. This is kind of like a good warm-up into the actual event itself, where we kind of just lay back and talk, we interact with you guys, and we don't really follow a script too much. We just kind of talk, like like what you saw there, we just started with a casual conversation. If you guys didn't watch, I posted a video of the jump that we did yesterday. I didn't jump at all, I was just doing in-flight medic coverage, which was... Pretty cool, but I'd rather jump out than land. Actually, <laughs> I hate I hate flying so much. And there, there's a difference between flying, like when you're landing in a civilian plane, but those C-17s, they just like I don't know what happened. They just turned and they dropped, and mm-hmm. you can feel the G-forces. Like it, it can't be that much compared to like fighter pilots. I've only landed in a C-17 once, and it was back when we did the Idri, where we were supposed to do an in-flight rig in the middle of the air rather than rigging at the green ram. So we rigged in the middle of the bird, and we're in a C-130, so it's much smaller. And we're doing maneuvers the entire time. And then once again, I had a heavy ruck, because it was loaded down with ammo as well for my saw, and those rounds just add up quickly. And then I also had my saw, just a ton of water, because we were gonna have to do like some 14 click movement. Once we secured the drop zone to go to another drop zone to take it over. And so, for whatever reason, the jump got scratched in the middle of us flying there, like the doors oh. open. We were hooked up and everything. We were we were at standby. Oh my god. And then the doors closed and all of us are just carrying this weight. We're all sweating. We just want out of this bird and we had to turn it around and land. And then yeah, nice. when we landed, <laughs> ka junk when you're like oh. <laughs> Well, shout out to Michael Castillo, 499. Thank you so much. I appreciate hey, it. What's Michael? up, Michael? You're one of my boys tonight because that, that's pretty darn cool. Justin Freeman, appreciate right? you guys working. Yep, All that's right. perfect. Appreciate the guys working or doing, keeping it up regularly. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. I would like to also say thank you for having me as a consistent guest on this bike cast. Absolutely. I, I enjoy having you on. It's a lot of fun. Oh, it's great. I get the nerd and geek out and... It's always fun because I'm always the kind of guy that talks during fights, and mostly people find it annoying. And I'm sure you find yourself in a similar situation. And now, which, well, we're, well, this when is I talk and people find me annoying every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Misfits fan, respect, sir. Thank you very much. Real quick, are you a fan of the uh, post Danzig era or pre Danzig? Well, not the Danzig era or post Danzig era. What, what are your thoughts? Me, I like both for different reasons. If I want to rage, I want to listen to the Danzig era. If I want to slow things down and listen to some more lyrical stuff that the Misfits have, I go I go post-Danzig. Misfits. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Don, My Don, I back to the fights. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, it was fun to go off topic, but we were talking about before we were on Can the show. about Brad Pitt again like I did last week? Brad Pitt. The only before one that we were, God ever made. Before we were... <laughs> Uh, filming, we were talking about Felicia Spencer against Chris Cyborg. Oh, that poor chick. And that's just it, it, when you look at the rankings and when you, we, we watched Felicia Spencer fight Megan Anderson in her last fight. And you, it, it was one of those fights where, like, it, cool. So she's a dominant grappler. She ate a lot of punches to get to her grappling. But it's like you and I were both talking. It's like, how's that gonna work against a Cyborg? Because she just seen nothing to take away from Felicia Spencer. I know what it takes to like, step inside and compete against the cage, but also it just seemed like she was a gear slower than anybody else in that division. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's just a tough fight because when you look at the rankings, it made sense to make this fight, but we're, we we said it right out, right out of the gate when Felicia Spencer beat Megan Anderson. Hey guys, what's up, Steven? <laughs> like post. <laughs> and when she fought Cyborg... Or when she fought Megan Anderson, she took her down and dominated the fight, which, I mean, Holly Holm did Holly, Holly Holm did that to Megan Anderson. Mm-hmm. So that just obviously shows a hole in Megan Anderson's game. So when we when Felicia Spencer exposed that, that's what her game plan is. Will that translate over to someone like Cyborg? Probably not, unfortunately, because Cyborg, we all think of her as a striker, but she also won IBJJF Worlds 2010-2011 as a purple belt. I think, too, it's like... Cyborg is definitely a storm, and it's can she weather a storm to take her into 
later rounds? Like, I know Cyborg's only gone the distance once, correct? One time in her UFC career against Holly Holm. That was the first time she had gone the distance in and then about how 10 was, years. How was she looking as far as going the distance in those later rounds? Did it look like she slowed she down? Wasn't, she wasn't the same killer, but she was still... And she did that to Holly Holm. Mm-hmm. Uh, she wasn't the same killer that she was in the first round, but she was able to sustain a good pace for five rounds. It wasn't like okay. she burned out. Then yeah, I'm just but I, she's I not the feel, first round cyborg. Because I mean, I would say Spencer's thing would have to be to weather a storm of like two rounds, and then drag her into deeper waters. But it's can she hold up to that? That's what I think. Yeah, it's it, it's just gonna be a tough night for her, and. Obviously, the, the odds show it, too. According to Forbes.com, as of two days ago, Chris Cyborg was a minus 750 favorite going into this fight. And this is one of the more sure picks because we were talking about it in the female division. How do you beat Chris Cyborg? You almost might have to be here at her own game, which is to outstrike her. That's what Amanda Nunes did. That's what Amanda Nunes did, and that's the only fault on her record as of right now. Will Felicia Spencer be able to do that? Probably not. She mm-hmm. she does. She's not that high level of caliber of a striker as of yet, at least. She is known as a grappler. She likes to take the fight down to the ground. Would that be able to translate to someone like Chris Cyborg? It's gonna be tough. This card sucks, except for two main events. It's really not that hey, bad of a card. Hey now. Hey um, now. When when you really look into it, honestly, um, there's one fight in particular. Obviously, the Alexis Davis and Vivian Araujo fight is very important. But Alexander Botoya and Davies and Figueiredo in the men's 125-pound division. Megan Anderson could have been a UFC superstar. She got the look and then she's she she's not quite well-rounded. She's not quite quite, quite well-rounded of enough of a fighter to stay at this high level. If you're getting taken down by Holly Holm and Holly Holm has made leaps and bounds with her uh, with her grappling, however, she's not an expert-level grappler. If she faces someone. Let's say like Alexis Davis, like one of these high level wrestlers that we have, she's gonna be in for a rude, awa- rude awakening. Uh, she's kind of like that, got that Darren Till effect where she's really good on the feet and that some was exposed on the ground. All right, I just put our little clip art Delio on my feed. Maybe we'll get a viewer for like noise. <laughs> And then uh, Alexander Patoy and David Yes and uh, Figadero. That's one of these interesting fights that has really also flown under the radar. This is between number three ranked and number four ranked flyweights in the UFC men's division right now. And let me get my notes out for this fight. So I wanted to take a quick, a closer look at it because I'm kind of uh, surprised that this hasn't gotten the recognition that it deserves. 125 pound division, but Toya having a record of 20 and 3, Figadero having a record of 15 and 1. These are two guys in that weight class that haven't fought for a title. What you kind of saw for many years was in the flyweight division, these guys at the top of the division have fought Demetrius Johnson multiple times and losing. Mm-hmm. And now you're seeing these new guys coming up. Toya and Figadero are just two of these guys. However, this division is going to be in a lock jam, and I don't see either one of these fighters moving up too much. Um, because who's here from Miga just recently had a big victory over uh, DBS and Figadero. The fact is, number three and number four is your grid. Nunez versus uh, Holly Ho versus Nunez was an amazing fight. Has been marking good fights. Has been made. ESPN UFC has been making good fights, especially since the UFC deal. Nt one Spencer, what's up, California love? They've been doing relatively well. Um. But that's one of those fights, the 125-pound division. But that division is going to be locked up there for a while with Henry Cejudo trying to defend two belts. My opinion, I would not like to see that because I don't. there's too much talent in those divisions for it to be locked well, also, up. Also, any time in general, I'm not a big fan. Like It's cool when the double champ champ thing goes on, but you hold divisions in hostage because they're either going in one or they're going in the other, and then fighters have to kind of just sit there and twiddle their thumbs. Mm-hmm. However, when there's just one champion, they can do a fight two, three times a year, and we don't see them once a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it's just it, it's just impossible. You can expect a fighter to defend two belts, and if they're not taking damage, possibly. But you're just talking about the highest level of competition. You need to have a training camp for these guys. You can't just take them on short notice. It's your, Super Chan, get it your, right. Is your girlfriend name Helena? Absolutely. <laughs> It's the name of one of their songs. Ah. And it's from this album. Mm. <laughs> you see, for some reason, I thought that was a... It looks like a professional wrestling shirt. That's what I thought it was initially. No. 
Misfits. There you go. Keep the Misfits comments going just because uh, Breck is completely out of the loop on all of them. <laughs> In case you didn't know, he has a gold medal. Henry Cejudo has a gold medal? What? In, in, I'm just playing. In, in what, boring? In, yeah. Boring Olympics? <laughs> Neil is going to KO Nico in round number two. That's an interesting prediction, and that's what the overall trend has been. Nico Price is one of the bigger underdogs on the card here tonight. Of course, right now, tonight, I'm picking... Uh, right now, tonight, I'm picking Nico Price. Because right now, currently, again, it changes but day by day. But right now, Nico Price is my favorite fighter, considering... That T-Bone MMA, first ever notes. Like I've taken hundreds of pages of notes throughout my career. He has like two or three stacks underneath this desk right now. From old from old fights. As, as we Ugh. speak, just stacks, just laying around. You should have seen it when I was at home doing this for, I, for, I don't want to. for almost a year. <laughs> Yo, what up, what up, what's up, Lee? That is something that you can do as a reward or for the highest bidder is that you could send them your notes. I thought about that, and that's what Bruce Buffer does, but I'm no Bruce Buffer, though. <laughs> right. I know you're no know Bruce Buffer, but it is definitely something tangible. That it's something tangible, for a hardcore, sure. A uh, hardcore fan would probably appreciate, much like a hardcore fan would keep hand wraps. Yeah, exactly. And people used to buy, like, Ronda Rouse's old bra. Like, for me, that's kind of disgusting, but when it's a part of a good fight, I'm like, okay, it's a piece of history, I guess. Mm hmm it's not quite the same as like owning Dan Henderson versus Shogun shorts. Those are pretty awesome. I kept the pair of shorts that I got the uh, three second knock in, and oh, I, would, right. I hated wearing those shorts. They were a pair of like rep your shorts that my school like sewn an old affi school affiliation that we used to be with them. We didn't keep it. It was a premier martial arts affiliation that we used to have, and it was sewn onto the front of the pant leg. And I hated these rep your shorts. Oh yeah. Just hate them because. I wear short shorts all the time, even when I'm not in gym clothes. <laughs> Who's wearing short shorts right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Uh. Show off them. Like, look, short shorts for the win, and then also Star Wars tattoos for the win. But so, <laughs> always typically wearing some type of short short. Uh, let me get back down here. These like stop just at my knee, and I just I hated them. I just absolutely hated them. But when I knocked that dude, I'm like. Uh, all right, I guess I'll keep these. You guess I'll keep these. <laughs> Beach of Penn deserves a title shot. He's got no. I think he jumps your eye favor. <laughs> I'm just playing. You should check out Doyle's girlfriend. Oh, going on about that band. I hope everybody's having a blessed day. How about Mini Bless? How much attention he's gotten? <laughs> you know, like uh, Max Holloway's son. Mm -hmm. that, I just always find that funny. How he's always at like press con or always at like the open workouts and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Well, it's a, it's a smart move on Holloway's part. You just have a cute kid, and I mean, that mark, excuse me, that marketing, sorry, I'm drinking a LaCroix right now with carbonated water, and that's why I'm burping, but, you know, just that type of cute kid just draws attention to you in the right way. Yeah, exactly. And, oh yeah, we were talking about Nico Price. All these years ago, I took my first notes on Nico Price against Brandon Thatch. He ended up winning that fight, so I've claimed him ever since. And since then, he's gone six and two in the UFC with one, one of those fights overturned to a no contest because he tested positive for marijuana after a fight. Is that a performance enhancing drug? No, it's an awesome drug, though. It's not a performance enhancing drug. Like, well, I don't it's know. Good. Uh, it enhances jujitsu. It enhances jujitsu. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, that's that's a fair point. I wouldn't know though. I'm in the army. Yeah, neither do I. Who do you think uh, Leon Edwards should fight next? It, it sounds cliche, but honestly, that Jorge Masvidal fight actually kind of makes sense a little bit. Mm -hmm. Considering the fact that uh, Kamara Usman, who's he fighting next? He's got a fight announced. Let's look at the rankings before I start making any <laughs> who's Michael? wild. Do we know that, Michael? Michael? Yeah. Uh, uh, which one? You go back to the comment there, Ed? Ah, oh, Michael. <laughs> we are very happy. I'm very happy to watch some fights today. Just so everyone knows, this guy has had an ad for the skeletal system in his browser. I was studying. I accidentally clicked on one of my bookmarks. I was studying up on. Uh, <laughs> I was studying up on some of my medical knowledge. What were we talking? Oh yeah, the 170 pound weight class. 
Kamaru Usman, Tyron Woodley, Kobe Covington, and Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal is fighting, or excuse me, Kobe Covington will be t- taking on Robbie Lawler. Isn't Dar- doesn't Darren Till also have a fight sometime soon? That was recently announced, and well, let's double check that. I don't think he does, actually. Let's see. That'd be a good one for Leon Edwards. It really would be. Uh, that t- but Leon Edwards jumping up at eight spots is now number four ranked. Harry Moswell number three. Covington number two. Tyron Woodley number one. It, think, it seems to be the trend that Jorge Masvidal will be getting the title shot. What about the winner of Pettis and Diaz? Pettis and Diaz, that would be an interesting one. To kind of, it would also help promote it, promote Leon Edwards as well, because mm-hmm. he's just one of those guys that's always on everybody's ra- under everybody's radar. Mm-hmm. So well, yeah, as far as like personality fight. and drawing a fight, you definitely can't undermine his skill. What did you guys think of Dan Hooker's knockout over James Vick? That's an unfortunate uh, sequence of events because. Dan Hooker knocked out James Vick very similarly to the way that Justin Gaethje knocked him out. Um, James Vick, he's got the best attributes in the 155-pound weight class. He's 6'3", mm-hmm. and has the most massive reach of that division. On paper, he should be dominating it. However, he's got one inherent flaw, and it's kind of like that Luke Rockhold style that he's got. He fights very long. However, he keeps his chin very exposed, and mm-hmm. we said it. Time and time again, before the fight, dur- during the fight, and eventually they got clipped again. He's got an inherent flaw, flaw in his system when he's got so much potential. He was 9-1 in the UFC prior to going on this three-fight skid. It was really unfortunate. No, I agree. Till announced he's moving to 185. That will be an interesting... <laughs> that's definitely a good weight for him, for sure. He's a very big guy. Vic got exposed. He certainly did, which is super unfortunate because I was super high on not to say a dumb thing like you guys. I've been watching all sorts of dirty things since five years ago, and I like more. Uh, I hear I love you so much. I, I, I like that. <coughs> Vic needs to go to 170. <coughs> and perhaps yeah. perhaps he can, obviously he's cutting a tremendous amount of weight to get to 155. Perhaps we might see him look a little bit better at 170. Mm-hmm. So, I like to see Till fight Branch or Hall at 185. There's a lot of opportunities for him. And I didn't even think about that. He, I remember see, hearing him in the news, and that's the reason why. It's because he's moving up in weight to 185 pounds. Um, if they want to give him a fight that's exciting for the fans to see and the one that he might have a possibility at winning at 185, that, yeah, that Raya Hall fight would be a very fun one to watch. I didn't even think about that. Uh, David Branch, that would be a tough fight. Tough fight for him. David Branch would like to get the fight down on the ground for sure. I, I would think that'd be a great way to kind of like introduce him to the 185, 185 pound division as well. Exactly. Oh, uh, what was it? Not a tight. I see. Okay, if Diaz wins, probably try to get McGregor Diaz three. Could you imagine? Um, if that happens, I don't want to see McGregor fight anymore. You don't want to see McGregor fight. I don't want to see him. Fight I've anymore. always said, shout out to T Bro. T Bro is killing it in. Fort Knox right now. Shout out to T, bro. Hmm. But um, what were we talking about a second ago? McGregor and Diaz. McGregor and Diaz. I'd always said that we'd see that fight like at Bellator 500. <laughs> <laughs> Where it, it, like Hoist Gracie against Ken Shamrock. Like I don't see that fight. I never saw, before I saw that fight ever happening. Mm-hmm. But really, if McGregor comes back, how much... What opportunity is there for him? He's not going to be... He's not going to be beating Habib anytime soon. He's not going to get a rematch anytime soon. Obviously, I would love to see him fight Justin Gaethje. I would love to see him fight Jorge Masvidal. There's fights for him that I would love to see just stylistically. Ooh, Masvidal and Diaz. Masvidal and Diaz. That Can you imagine be... the trash talking leading up to that fight, too? I think there would almost be a mutual respect for each other. <laughs> mm, yeah. I, I could see it. Uh, but I almost feel like, because they're, so, they're exactly the same, I feel like there'd be a weird, weird respect for each other. Until one says something bad about the other. <laughs> and then, yeah. They just big and might have... That might help her to grapple Cyborg. She's big, but Cyborg is also a black belt. Or, she's just more athletic. She's just more athletic. She won IBJJF Worlds as, as a purple belt in 2011, 2012. Two years. She's got a lot of accolades on the ground. Even though she's not known for her ground game, obviously that's where Felicia Spencer has the advantage on the ground. Or the most... The most advantage is on the ground, but when, when have we ever seen 
Chris Cyborg get taken down and manhandled by anybody. She's never fought anybody. Like, are you even really on the ground shit. for that matter? If it is, it's up quickly. It's up quickly, and if she's, if it's ever on the ground, it's mostly her hitting the fighter that's on the ground. Mm-hmm. And she's never had to finish. I think she's got no, no. She doesn't have a single uh, submission victory in her career. She's got that in her back pocket if she ever needs it. Mm-hmm. Like I could dev- definitely see here. Like one of my favorite things to see is a fighter, like a jiu-jitsu guy. Knocking someone down and then finishing the fight with like a rear naked choke instead of trying to go punching themselves out when, like you saw it with uh, George St. Pierre against Michael Bisping, how he clipped him with that left hand. Michael mm-hmm. Bisping's one of the toughest guys on the earth, and George St. Pierre is a black belt in jiu jitsu, and he got his back and rear naked choked him. There's nothing you can have a great chin, but that's not going to help you when you're getting choked out. <laughs> Correct. No, I just it also just displays a full uh, fighter's wheelhouse. Exactly. Sabo and Nunes too, and that's essentially what we're going to be foreseeing in the future. Like, I'm just, I'm not looking past Felicia Spencer at all. However, I think we do need to look at this fight realistically and say, yeah, man, she's got her hand full. She's got her hands full in this fight. It's going to be very, very difficult for her. The loser of Cook and Stewart might get cut. Um, both of them, I believe Cook is, let me double check. I think it's Coke. Coke? 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 Yes. <laughs> we'll go with Coke. Okay, it's somewhere around here. Whatever. Oh, there it is. God, who did... Eric Coke. Who did he fight? And they, I remember he fought one time, and they just... They hyped him up. He's like, he cut so much weight to get down here. And he gets, like, just starched in the first round. Who would that have been again? Darren Kruk? Krushak? Darren Kirshen. Kirshen? That might have been it. Possibly. We'd probably have to look at his record and see what a first round. Yeah. He's got two and five out. in his last seven. Kyle Stewart. It's a little bit early for him to try and, for the UFC to try to cut Kyle Stewart because he's own one in his UFC career. He lost a chance Rhett and Counter um, in that fight. his last fight then. What's that? This could potentially then be his last fight. It'd be unlikely to see him go 0 and 2 and then get cut immediately, but it is a possibility in the 170 pound weight class. I don't see his cutthroat. <laughs> UFC is cutthroat, that is right. Uh, but Kyle Stewart, he's a very exciting guy. Um, he's got lots of finishes to his record. I don't see him, if he loses this fight, I don't see him getting cut from the UFC. Mm-hmm. Eric, uh, Eric Cook, 4 and 5 in his UFC career, and 2, two and 5 in his last 7. A loss is very bad for him. And it's going to be difficult to make uh, an argument for him to stay in that weight class, or to stay in the UFC. Din is a manipulator is trying to deny Cyborg the rematch, saying she doesn't want to do it. If she, I, I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, I highly doubt Cyborg would want to avoid Amanda Nunes, considering that the only division that she can be in is the 145-pound weight class. So I, I find that sh- shocking. Cyborg, I think, is a better shot in a rematch. She won't load up. And that's just a rematch I think everybody wants to see. Yes. Oh, Zingano's career lately has been just like an up and down roller coaster. It really has. I feel like she she gets one win and then like takes two losses. Mm -hmm. Don't they sign three fight contracts? Usually. UFC can do whatever they want though. (laughs) Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kyle Stewart, fresh off the all, he was on the Dana White's Tuesday Contender Series back in 2017. In that fight, it was one of the most bizarre what happened was, it was a back and forth battle. It was a very fun fight to watch. The other guy dislocated his ankle in the middle of the fight as he was moving laterally across the cage. And it just came out, and the guy fell down. And they had to call the fight. If that hadn't happened, he would have probably been signed to the UFC right away. He went 4-1 and one in between those. Went 3-1 in the uh, LFA during that time. Wood's only loss was to an undefeated fighter. So... Uh, but in that fight against Chance Red Encounter, he was taken down. It was rear naked choked very mm-hmm. quickly. It was like two minutes. Eric Koch, Cook, Coach, Coach, Coke. Coke, Coke could do the exact, same exact thing. That's how I see it going. The, the reason why I had to go into the second round was because I think that Kyle Stewart is going to be a little bit more defensive. But essentially, I think that's going to be a, be the outcome. Mm-hmm. Sabro loses. I don't see. Uh, Dana resigning here. They probably honestly closed down that division. If, if Cyborg loses loses this fight here, the, they wouldn't close down the division right away. Felicia Spencer would get a title shot against Amanda Nunes, no uh-huh. doubt about it. But if Cyborg Ouch. loses the rematch, they probably close that division down. They probably cut Cyborg and close the division down because there's really not much you can do. That division was built for her, 
And now Amanda Nunes mm-hmm. is the queen of that division. Because even, like, what is Invictus 145-pound division like? It's a little bit better. It's got a little bit more depth to it. Right. However, it's so just not quite the same. So it goes one of two ways. They either buy all those fighters out or cut it. Mm-hmm. And if they haven't done it already, I don't see them doing it in the future, especially if Cyborg loses, mm-hmm. loses the second match. And I don't see them making another rematch, uh, a third fight for Amanda mm-hmm. It's just so hard to, to promote that. I mean, Cyborg is just like one of those like almost relic fighters to where it's like, I think just once we can get past a hurdle of her, <laughs> mm-hmm. they can potentially build up that weight, weight class. Yeah. And I don't remember the last time the UFC's ever taken down a division. They did it with the 155-pound division many years ago, and then they mm-hmm. eventually reinstated it. Um, which is crazy to think that they only had... The lightest weight class was 170 at one point. And now we got male fighters at 125. And then females as low as... 115. 115 and Yosemite. I don't think they have an atom weight. No, they never had an atom weight. They might have had... No, I don't even think they had a catch weight bout that low. Yeah, Cyborg would go to Bellator. Bellator doesn't even really have a stacked 145-pound weight class, do they? No. How about Paige Van Zant? What do you think she fights next? 115 or 125? She's having a tough time in both divisions. She's (laughs) having a tough time in both divisions. 125 would probably have the most most for her in the future considering that the competition isn't quite there it's not quite as stacked as the 115 mm-hmm. but it's just very difficult it's true I don't see uh, Van Zant doing very well against Nami Yunus Mm-mm. or Ioana or Ioana man she'd just get pieced up <laughs> she'd get pieced up against Shevchenko we got a lot of freaking dominant champions right now any chance they allow open weight Cyborg versus Gabby Garcia <laughs> aren't they teammates though I don't know. I haven't heard. I, don't, I think I don't they know. are teammates. But that's honestly what I was thinking in my head. Well, how would a girl like Cyborg fare? How big is Gabby Garcia? Is she like I'll one? Right, I'll look she, it up right now. Is she 170, 180? Garcia probably won't want that fight. They train together. They do train together. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, I see him post stuff together. I follow uh, Cyborg on Instagram, and they post stuff to where they're. They're both together all the time. Hmm. Gabby Garcia. Yes, Gabby Garcia to join the UFC laughing face, laughing space. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I was wondering in my head, honestly. How would a fight with, like... All right, Wikipedia says, I don't know how true it is, 209 pounds. 209 pounds. She would manhandle anybody in the UFC. I thought she was more like 170, 180. I forget how big she actually is. Catch away about between the Manny Nunes and Gabby Garcia. Gabby Garcia would wreck her face in. There, there's just. What about Frankie Yeager? The guy's a legend, but I feel like Max's gonna punish him. Good job bringing me back to the main event here, because that's that's a f- another fight that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Because if there's a guy that could probably beat Max Holloway in the 145 pound weight class right now, I think it is Frankie Yeager. Honestly, I, I, I don't like doing the age card, but. Edgar is a little up there in ages and years, and except for that one time he got the fifty-five pound title, which got taken up almost instantly by Henderson. Mm-hmm. I don't see him being dominant at one forty-five, even if he does get it. Yeah, and with those with that one hundred fifty-five pound weight class, you got to you got to think about the competition that he fought against. He fought against Gray Manor, mm-hmm. obviously the age card, the age card is there, and BJ Penn. Those are essentially the two guys that he defended his title against. He had two fights against Benson Henderson, had a split decision in one of them. It was a relatively close fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lost twice against Jose Aldo, and you saw how much success that Max Holloway against, had against Jose Aldo. Yeah, true. But also, you know, MMA math never works. Never and does let's, work. Let's play devil's advocate here. Max Holloway and Jose Aldo are completely different fighters. They mm-hmm. have different styles, and Max Holloway has happened to work against Jose Aldo twice. Jose Aldo was much more of a counterfighter than Max Holloway is. And he was able to expose a lot of the weaknesses that Frankie Edgar has had. He was constantly fighting off the jab. I never allowed Frankie Edgar to try to explode him with one of his takedowns. He disguised his takedowns so well, very George St. Pierre-esque in his takedowns where he mixes it up perfectly with his striking. That's going to add a different element to this fight that we haven't quite seen Max Holloway had to deal, have to deal with before. Mm-hmm. And the only time he was... He went... I think since the McGregor fight to the Brian Ortega fight without being taken down. And that was like 13 fights, 13, 14 fights, many years. 
But the only time he was taken down by Brian Ortega was hit Brian Ortega grabbing a hold of him, Damian Maya style, and just dragging him down to the ground. I'm interested to see. He always gets props for, props for his takedown defense. I'm interested to see exactly how he's going to be able to stop a takedown attempt right. from Frankie Edgar. That's true. That's also takedowns in jiu-jitsu, not college-level wrestling. Although, did Edgar go to college? Yep, he was a D1 wrestler. Okay, I'm about to say, okay, so yeah, D1, never won, never D1 college level wrestling experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, never was quite a... Because uh... even in jiu-jitsu, if you've been grappling with a guy for a while who just does jiu-jitsu, and then, yes, he can take you to the ground. However, when a new, fresh white belt who's had uh, wrestling experience, even if it's not in D1... His takedown still, he'll, he's still going to put you on the back. Yes, you submit him, but there's also no punches involved. <laughs> there's also no punches involved. And like but you said before, pretty and you summed it up pretty well. Put me down anytime he wants. <laughs> and, and you sum it up pretty well. A black belt turns into a blue belt really quick when you start getting the elbowed in the face. Absolutely. Lokanovsky will be in Except the for me. tonight. Except for me. I get triangles. Yeah. And a broken rib. <laughs> Volkanovski. It's a good fighter and boring, but not a draw that all the fight was... Yeah, that was a tough fight, and that was a tough tie. That's the... If he had went out there and just blasted Jose Yalo, he'd be in a title spot right now. I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. And he actually weighed in to be a stand-in for this fight in case if Frankie Edgar or Max Holloway didn't make way. He would have been in. It would have been a replacement. So, uh... Damn, I almost wish that one would have happened. I almost wish that one would have happened. It would have been an interesting fight. And considering the rankings, if we put it on paper, that's the fight that should have happened. Why don't you rep T-Bone MMA? T. Oh. Do you want a T-Bone MMA? You're rocking that right now, and I like what you got going on. I've never been given it. One time you gave me stickers, and then you gave them to Barry. Oh, did I? <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you want a shirt? <laughs> Absolutely, I'll wear a T-Bone MMA shirt awesome. for you. Do, you. do you want one tonight? Yeah. You sure? You sure? Yeah. So I can run and grab one real quick. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad now. Did you see that casual uh, shirt that... Did I just release? Uh-uh. I'll have to show you that. Sick. All right, here. Uh, I will be right back. I'm going to go take care of this. Sorry, you guys can't see my muscles. <laughs> I'll have to show you the new, the new shirts that I just made. Speaking of that, if you guys are interested... I'm uh, going to make a cup of coffee real quick. Awesome. Why don't you rep the T-Bone? Yeah, he's got it on now. Cover those bee stings up, bro. Wait, what did he say? He said cover those bee stings up. Did you get stung by a bee recently? Much better picks this week, T-Bone. Last week's, we'll forget about those. Let's forget about those. I went for like, I think I got, I think I went two and five. Those were brutal. Let's see if I can recover. Last week, the last pay-per-view card, I did pretty well. I think I was like, I think I was 8 out of 11, 7 out of 11 or something like that. It was pretty good. What size is the hat, one you have on? I believe it's a large. I always kind of wear large shirts. Um, but if you guys are interested, teespring.com, link in the description down below. Uh, and if you guys want to donate, by the way, the new developments of my channel, my channel just got recently monetized. So Super Chat is now available. I will not be putting ads in my videos because I hate watching ads to death. Um, so yeah, um, Super Chat's another good way to interact with you guys. Oops. You good, bro? Yeah, I'm just getting the uh, coffee ground. Oh, okay. I think I need an X. Um, what was I about to say? Yeah, I have an egg. I have a large. Anyway, um, Chris Sauber, Max Holloway. Despite me propping up Frankie Edgar a little bit more, I still think Max Holloway is going to have a very similar fight that he had against Brian Ortega. I think he's going to piece him up on the fees. A much longer and lengthier fighter going into this fight. It's going to cause Frankie Edgar. Of course, he's had to deal with that his entire career, but I think it's going to be very similar to his fights with Jose Aldo. And Max Holloway being Max Holloway, I think he's going to have a... Uh, um, there's a significant advantage in this fight. So that's why I had to go into Max Holloway. However, there is still the precedent that, um, hey guys, welcome back, Spencer. This is going to be a much better fight weekend, Tyler. Let's hope so. I, I don't see these fights failing us too much. 
Vol- Volkanovski is in uh, Edmonton as an alternate. Yep, he did weigh in. He weighed in at the uh, he weighed in at one one hundred and forty five pounds. So he he was there. Unfortunately, he didn't get the title shot. And again, that's what I was saying earlier. If you want to get a title shot, you have to prove your worth. Even though it made complete sense on paper to have him fighting for a title. Let's see, I think he's on a five fight winning streak and just had a victory over Jose Aldo, the former pound for pound king of the 145 pound weight class. He did not have a lot. He just had a huge lackluster fight and it's very difficult to promote you to get a title shot, even though it made complete sense. Frankie Edgar, however, on the flip side of the coin, he hasn't fought in over a year. The last time he fought, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, he, he defeated Jeremy Stevens, defeated Yair Rodriguez, lost to Brian Ortega. He beat Cub Swanson back in April of 2018. That's the last time. That looks good on you. Uh, it's a great fit. Uh, don't worry, the guy who made fun of my bee stingers, next week I'll come back and I'll make sure the sleeves are gone just so you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> And Frankie Yeager, again, it just is absolutely crazy that Volkanovski did not get the uh, title shot in this fight. Because Frankie Yeager hasn't fought in a year, and he's 1-2 and two in his last three fights. He's 1-1 one one in his last couple fights. Hey, Misfits guy, where's a Scream 2 shirt? with it? Oh, now people don't want that on. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we can't win. No. <laughs> oh, you're repping the T-bone on the man. Prediction on the sideboard, does Spencer have a chance? We kind of went over that a little bit earlier. Any fighter that any fighter that steps in the octagon has a chance. There is always a puncher's chance. There's always a puncher's chance. However, man, it's going to be tough. Because when you think about it, she has to get the fight down to the ground. And I think Cyborg, honestly, might have her beat on the ground as well. Yes. It's Man, it's, it's just a, a tough fight for her. She does have a lot of submission victories. She's got four submission victories. She also has one knockout. Defeated Megan Anderson. Dominated that fight. Is undefeated going into this fight. However, she's got six fights. And none of them are against... Obviously, that Megan Anderson. Megan Anderson's a very high-level opponent. But it's not cyborg-level opponent. Mm-hmm. Just tough. Dig up her bones. That's the name of a song. Oh, well, I'll have to show you that... Uh, <laughs> Remember how I said I wanted to see T1 on the May like as that Coca Cola logo? Yes. Uh, yeah, kind of like on my Jiu Jitsu sh- t shirt. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, I didn't have my logo on it though. Just a little bit more laid back. I like that. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I don't get copyrighted for that, t- for that YouTube logo. Nah, do a pair of jump wings. Pair of jump wings. Do you think Dana is lying about Cyborg not wanting the man to fight? I don't. You don't think he's lying? I I I've never heard I never heard Dana saying that. I never did either. Um, it wouldn't make sense. I don't know why Cyborg wouldn't want to fight Amanda Nunes. I don't know. It, it would be weird for her not to. Do you hate money? Yeah, exactly. Like even if you imagine how hyped that fight would be, because because um, Cyborg, I think that fight would draw a lot of attention. Not just. Just a man, I am B man. What's up, Seth? Happy to have you. Rule of thumb: Don't trust Dana Way. I, again, I, I respect Dana a lot. I respect Dana with everything that he's done. It's always tough to take his word on stuff. Piggyback off of that, rule of thumb: Don't trust fight promoters in general. Mm-hmm. First hand experience. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> you said we want it, but Cyborg doesn't. Lots of times in the middle of an interview. That, that could have been some sort of a miscommunication between Cyborg and uh, Dana White. That might have been the fact that maybe Cyborg didn't want that Don't fight right now, didn't lies. want the immediate rematch. <laughs> Dana repeatedly says it. If I had to guess, I think Cyborg didn't want that fight immediately and wanted a fight before that. It, it just doesn't make sense. It, I haven't heard Cyborg say it herself, so that's why I'm not hmm. like... That's why I'm not trying to convey that, which I'm kind of surprised that Danny would do that. How about uh, T-Bone versus Cyborg? I don't want that. <laughs> no thanks. I'd want it. You'd want it? That's. Just... And then I will, while you're fighting, I will gladly take over your cast. There you go. <laughs> but please leave all instructions in detailed writing on how to set this up and probably crayons and pictures as well. You know what's hilarious? I kept getting 
ads for crayons on my pic on my ah. computer. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like Target sponsoring crayons. I'm not in the Marines. <laughs> we need more women's 145 pounders in the contender series. That'd be an interesting way to get it more exposure than 145 pound mm -hmm. women's 145 pound weight class. But still, then it's like none of those fighters are gonna be that of those top one or two fighter caliber. No, none of them will be. There's always going to be, I think... I think if we can get rid of Cyborg and then farm up the division that way, absolutely there would be a strong case for that. Mm -hmm. I just don't... They made that division for her and her only. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Amanda Nunes versus Henry Cejudo. Who do you ever have and who do you think would win? I think Henry Cejudo easily. Nah. Nah. Is it because you don't like Cejudo, or you honestly think that? Because I don't like Cejudo. Yeah. Honestly, like, guys and girls are different. I, I don't mean to be sexist here, but it's, it's it's just, it's different. Okay? Just take my word on it. Contender series would be revamped and look for more old strike force fighters in the series. You can take the Bellator out on that and just get old fighters onto it. But, man, <laughs> it's going to be hard to promote. I don't think they promote that contender series very well. I even I can't even get even get interested in it too much. I think mm -hmm. it's tough, and maybe just because I'm tired after work every single day, <laughs> and I'm constantly <laughs> taking notes. Like you understand too, we're just exhausted. I mean, sometimes I have a hard enough time trying to find enough mustard to go and roll. Exactly. So <laughs> it, it's it's just always it's it's just a tough sell for the contender series. I don't know why. Like at one point, I was just extremely interested in it. Of course, that was I. I personally did enjoy. It, but a lot of people didn't like Snoop Dogg on it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> I like because even though it was Snoop Dogg, he had your eye of favor there with him. Okay, that's a good balance right there. Your eye of favor is a great commentator. It was a great professional guy to balance out mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg. Okay, and then the caveat to have Snoop Dogg balance out a very technical analysis. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we work well, is you're super technical and I am not. Yeah, there's, there's something to that, that funny man, straight man thing. Like, there's something to it, always. Guys, thoughts on the main event method of victory draw plus 7,000? Serious question. I didn't hear anything about that. Uh-uh. So what's that? You bet $1 on it, you get $70 back? I think so. Oh, why not throw a dollar at it? <laughs> why not? <laughs> you make a lot more money betting on... Think about it. You need to bet like seven dollars to get one dollar for that cyborg fight. The ultimate fighter should come back. I I would be ready for another season. It, it's just, I think they just they ran it into the ground. How many seasons they just did back to back to back to back to back to back to back. They really did, and they weren't very. There were a lot of gems that we had, like that's ultimate fighter season ten. With Rampage Jackson, Rashad Evans. That was a golden season. He Actually, had so many great fighters on it, too. I will say, how about a women's 145 Ultimate Fighter to build a division? Much like what they did for the women's 115. 115 and 125, even. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of fighters in 125 and on it. even do a, uh, what they did when Ronda Rousey did tough. Have men and women oh, yeah. on the fight as well. Thank you for donation. That's my parents. But thank you very much for the donation. This or did it, but I stopped watching... Uh, Watched up and wa stopped watching years ago. I got into it. Um, I stopped last... watching after a uh, tough Canada versus Australia. I'm trying to remember that. Who are the coach? Was that that was who were the coaches on that? Was that Tim Kennedy and no no no, 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 that wasn't. No, it was. Shoot, he, he used to fight out of Greg Jackson. It was the guy who was good friends with uh, Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin, help us out here. Who is the coach in Ultimate Fighter season Canada? Versus Australia. Because there was a fighter on this card here tonight that was on it. Uh, maybe an Ultimate Fighter season every summer on ABC. <laughs> I, if, they had, if they had something on Mom and Daddy T-Bone in the house. What's up, Mom and Dad? You have to consider airing fights on ABC next season. That, that'll never happen. Considering that ESPN is like an $800 million deal. But I could see them doing like a 30 for 30 show. Something along those lines. Yeah. Then ABC though is just such a family network. Mm -hmm. I know it still is sometimes hard to sell. It's hard like, to have... Even though it's more mainstream. It's hard to have Modern Family followed by The Ultimate Fighter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it. You have Modern Family and then Rampage Jackson kicking out of the door. Even back when I was competing, I had a hard enough time like convincing like girls' parents that, what do you do for a living? Well, I, I teach martial arts and I compete. Like, what else? Like, 
No, that, that's that's, that's what I do for a living. You're like, oh, like, no college? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who do you predict uh, the strawweight champion, women's champ, a year from now? I don't think Thug Rose will ever be champion again. I um, think the belt rotates around two or three more times. Okay. Long Duck, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Go Frankie. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Now, oh shoot. Ah, what would be the next purchase with all these cool funds that T-Bone MMA is getting? What would be the next thing to improve the show? Long Duck already bought me my Monster Energy. <laughs> so shout out to Long Duck. Thank you very much. Uh, quarterly <coughs> Fight Night cards on ABC. They used to do it for Fox under... Oh, ABC. Are they under... I didn't realize that. Are they I didn't either. Umbrella? I didn't under. I didn't know. Because I know either. ESPN's owned by Disney, and huh. Disney has their hands in everything. Yes, they do. Mickey Mouse versus Goofy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Quarterly fight night cards on ABC. That'd be interesting. I didn't even think about that. There is a possibility that they'd have it on ABC. That that is an interesting way to. Disney owns ABC. That's that's uh -huh. interesting. Then I would like to see Taylor Swift versus Joanna. Taylor Swift versus Joanna. Or Miley. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. ESPN and ABC do it a lot of... I really wish... And it, it's just so tough. Maybe it's just because... Goofy has the height and reach. Goofy has the height and reach. Exactly. Let's make it happen. One of these fights that I tried to sell on my show... Because Joe Rogan did it with Michael Bisming and Dan Henderson. I have the poster there to prove it with UFC 204. Uh, it was Conor McGregor against Donald Cerrone. I've always wanted to see that fight. Yes. Way back in the day. T-Bone MMA fans, let's make that happen somehow. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't, I'm not no Joe Rogan. But let's make that fight happen. You got to get your t Twitter game stronger. I got to get my Twitter game stronger. Don Dunk with Swoke them all. This is going in a different direction than I thought it would go. <laughs> I like this direction. It's interesting. It's usually the thoughts that go on in my head. <laughs> get out of my head, internet. <laughs> Honestly, Nick Diaz versus Masvidal. That's what we were talking about earlier. Or Diaz versus Goofy. Diaz versus Goofy. Stockton. Could you imagine that? <laughs> Goal? Goal? <laughs> this is like his... Getting watch. Stockton slapped. Goal? <laughs> Just watch his head go back. Goal? 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 <laughs> Cerrone McGregor won 65 pound title. <laughs> Honestly, I want to see that fight more than anything. You know what I did want to see? We were talking about it last week, and I still like to hype up Alexi Olenek, even though he just got knocked out in 13 seconds. If there's one person that can, Smission Underground, Chael Sonnen can make it happen. Frank Mir against Alexi Olenek in a grappling match. Uh, Who do you got? That's a dream matchup for me. I want to see that more than any UFC fight ever. Who do you got? Well, I would go with Olenek. Olenek? I got Olenek too. Am I crazy? Guys, please debate in the comments. This is one... This is one thing I wanted to promote for a long time. Frank Mir against Alexi Olenek. Submission Underground style grappling match where they have the cage around. Who do you got in that match? I would go with Alexi Olenek. <laughs> my boss back in case he commented on my picture yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark. Cardi Hottie versus Joanna. What are your predictions for that fight coming up? I still think Joanna. I, I, I always still hype up Joanna. I still think she's one of the best. Absolutely Joanna. Yeah, it'll be an interesting fight. If we, there's another Yoana fight, we have to somehow get Tony Hinchcliffe on the fight. He, he always, oh my god, <laughs> he always talks about how much in love he is with her. Uh huh. Because <laughs> they dated for a while, didn't they? No, not at oh, all. Oh, they didn't. No. Oh, no. The Karate Hottie. Oh wait, no. What's the age difference between Mir and Alexi? It can't be that much. Frank uh -huh. Mir. <laughs> I just know that. Alexi Olenek's, Olenek's old. Well, it's Frank just Mir's old. He's just been active over a longer period of time who has Olnick? yeah yo yeah for sure i just feel like with him constantly being on the mat mm -hmm. he would have the advantage over mir yeah just one submission only matchup just one round in a cage would you do ebi Wins. rules where there's the overtime or would you like okay no one submit each other no nope, no time this? limits oh in a no. cage no time limits throw them in there god that'd be a that'd be a long match okay what could potentially be a long match. But you gotta think, maybe, I wonder how tired they would get. Like, especially Frank Mir, because he got big. It, it's, it's always interesting to see, like, 
the different forms of Frank Mir that we've ever seen. We've seen him just yoked and lean, like a 240. Mm -hmm. And then he got that motorcycle accident, and then he got like a big, fat 265. And then he got this yoked and lean 265. And then the last time we saw him against Fedor, he just got slept, and he looked like a fatty. <laughs> yeah. It's always grappling. Who win, Who beats Ronda in a grappling match? Now, that's something interesting. Um, that's like an interesting jiu question. Jiu-Jitsu or Judo? I'd have to think Jiu-Jitsu. I, I, I feel like if you did any 135-pound female IBJJF, she could prob they could probably take on Ronda Rousey. I think so, too. Because, I mean, that's just a whole different ballgame. I mean, Absol GGF, when you get in the high levels. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Frank Mir is 40. And I think Alexi Olnick's actually a little bit older. Let's make that fight happen. I, won't, I, I plan on actually, like, direct messaging Chael Sonnen, begging for that fight. Like, that's how much I want to see it. I think you should set a, a reminder on your phone every day to send Chael Sonnen a message. Because I think he would want to see that as well. Mm -hmm. I don't so, know. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my cup of coffee. Oh, cool, cool, Should cool. Should definitely be done by now. Oh, yeah, that's been done for a while. <laughs> Maybe even enough temperature to drink it. <laughs> yeah. Mirror's high level unless he gets punched. Exactly. Cheap versus Tia. Uh, if you mean Dana versus Tito, that's... I wonder, I wonder if that fight's still on the table. Oh, oh yeah. Chael versus Tito. That's Chael always, versus that's Tito. That's always been the Dana versus Tito. Tito is the Brett Favre of a mixed martial. You know, who's the real Brett Favre? BJ Penn. <laughs> yeah, of the, how long he's been active and still fighting. Man, they're trying to promote Nick Lentz against BJ Penn. No. No, <laughs> for God's sake. Why? Why? Like, Dana has done it multiple times to fighters where he tells them to retire. Why isn't he doing it with BJ Penn? It, it just doesn't make sense in my head. I think he does, he just doesn't. <laughs> if, if I were... I would just I would just be like, go fight in Bellator. Like I know I'm buddies with you, but don't fight. I can't have you fight here, especially with that boxer that just died recently. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's a completely different situation. But you guys are legit. Ty, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Tito's apology after talking about John Jones and DC was funny and weird. I didn't hear about that. Do you like Stepe? I love Stepe. Absolutely. Hence the firefighter. Hence the firefighter. Uh, the fire truck there. It's covered up by Canada, though. It's covered up by Canada. These fights are in Canada right now. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I had it out there. Tell me where you got that Canadian patch. A Canadian patch. We did a training mission in Bulgaria recently with uh, a Canadian company and traded that. Ah, that's how I got it. That's how I got mine. Yeah. <laughs> I gave them my only colored flag. Oh, really? Yeah, and then when we came back to the airfield, like, where's your colored flag? I'm like, uh, but I've got a colored Canadian one. One of the funnier stories I heard, this one guy... It was like an E6, traded like everything. And then he goes, okay, this is the new uniform now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's happening. I'm chewing gum. I got some caffeine gum if you want some as well. Uh, right now I'm chewing on some nicotine gum. Nicotine gum? Ah. <laughs> if you need some caffeine gum, I got some too. That's one thing these first strike rations have nice is these, uh, they got caffeine mints, they got caffeine gum. I've done the mistake of having all five at once. I made that. You know what happened with me? We went on that plane ride to Germany and I thought those were, that was just gum. I didn't realize it was caffeine gum <laughs> until I got on the plane. I'm like, crap, I'm not going to sleep on this flight. Yeah. So this has about as much caffeine as one cup of coffee, like just a smidge under. So when you just have the, one pill, <laughs> yeah, one mint. So when you have Five, you have five cups of coffee pretty much at once. Yes, overdose. <laughs> now, I've been up before, too. The first time I saw those mints was we did a jump in Arkansas last year. Oh, really? Yeah, but and they had to get there like really, really early because we had to fly to Arkansas. And so I crack open this first strike ration and I see those and I'm like, oh, caffeine mints, cool. And then, like, fast forward to me just sitting in a package for hours, just. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then I did my usual ornery stuff of messing with people and got yelled at a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's too funny. So, by the way, you're a specialist now. Are you going to be a team leader position anytime soon? <sighs> it is definitely in the talks. Is it actually? Mm-hmm. Dang. Just scary. Me being an adult. <laughs> being an adult. <laughs> it's kind of fun being like a private and not having any responsibility, but it also sucks at the same time. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, because usually it's like your name comes up first for any detail. Oh my goodness, that's been my week so far. <laughs> I just been thrown around <laughs> so much. Six thirty-two. All right, we might wrap up this uh, this preview show. Tune in at seven o'clock, or we might start it up a little a few minutes early. So like at six fifty here on the Eastern Coast, ten minutes before the top of the hour, we'll be back up and running for this main card. We're gonna get everything set up. We're gonna have our our thumbnail all nice, looking nice and pretty. And we'll be back here in a couple minutes. T1, what does the T stand for? My first name is Tyler. That's what the T, T stands for. But anyway, we're going to wrap this up real quick. So anyway, hope to see you guys soon here. Ten minutes from the top of the hour, we will be back. So anyway, this is Tyler Bergen, Spencer Moore from T1 MMA. We will catch you guys later. See you guys in approximately 17 minutes. All right.